Okay, it's 11 a.m. sharp here in Taiwan in the morning. And I know it's evening in a different part of the world. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone who participated online today. So welcome to today, today, today's dialogue entitled, uh, titled Vision, Innovative Governance and Sustainability, a 21st Century Higher Education Paradigm. And we're very happy to have uh, Professor Jeffrey J. P. Tai. He's also the president of Asia University to be the speaker for today. And it's also a great um, privilege to have invited Professor uh, Feng Daxuan to be the moderator today. He is um, a member of Asia University International Advisory Board. He's also a former vice president for research at the University of Texas at Dallas and a fellow of the American Physical Society. So without um, further ado, I'm going to turn the floor to Professor Fong to moderate today's session. Uh, thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, we are in the new normal now. Whenever we organize a forum of the 21st century nowadays, we bring in um, an audience from every corner of the world, which is a new paradigm uh, and a new normal. Uh, we're very, very happy today to have the opportunity to have a dialogue with Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Tai who is the founding and current president of Asia University in Taiwan. Um, about seven years ago, my friend, uh, Dr. So in Korea, who was one of the architects of the Korean technology um, paradigm, told me that um, one of the ways to look at Korean universities sophistication and maturation is to notice that private universities in Korea are as competitive and sometimes more than competitive than the public universities. Uh, for the seven years I spent in Taiwan, I did not notice that, but recently, I think we all would agree that Asia University, along with its sister component, the Chinese, uh, China's uh, Medical University in Taichung, uh, are changing that paradigm in Taiwan. And the other thing why it is so exciting for today's, uh, uh, for today's paradigm, uh, for today's discussion, is that I returned from Asia about four years ago. And to my great surprise, that the, uh, the Western world, especially the United States and Canada and so on, did not recognize or did not realize that Asian higher education, and not just Asia University, but Asian higher education all across Asia is rising very, very fast, which obviously tells you that the Asia transformation into the 21st century is uh, manifested by this rise. So I have been very anxious to promote in the Western world this particular idea that they should understand the rise of Asian universities. And today we are going to see one of such university showing the great rise of Asian universities in general. So without ado, let me uh, invite Professor Tsai to give a short comment before we enter into our dialogue. Jeffrey, please. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dashen Professor Fan. Uh, uh, it's my great honor that I uh, have a chance to, uh, uh, in this forum, uh, to uh, speak some of my personal experience uh, since I returned to Taiwan uh, 20 years ago. And uh, this is really, uh, uh, this, uh, I think, is a turning point not just in Taiwan, but also 
whole, whole world that uh, we are facing in the higher education. And I really appreciate that uh, uh, Da Xian has uh, great patience on higher education. Uh, actually, this is just one of them. He has organized voluntarily many different kinds of the uh, foreign. Uh, actually, this is the uh, very important in the current world. Uh, since we are facing so many challenges, you see the uh, the pandemic uh, right now over three thousand million people uh, was uh, affected by this uh, terrible uh, pandemic and over five million people die uh, because of it and this is also uh, put a lot of this uh, challenge on the higher education. Uh, right now, that uh, uh, different part of the world have a different uh, kind of uh, this uh, situation. Uh, many part of the world actually, uh, a lot of students, they cannot go to classroom. Uh, a lot of them are sick. A lot of them cannot get enough vaccine or uh, medical attention. And many of them university or many country allow, allow, allow they can use in the internet to do the uh, education. But also people also question what is the quality of this online education? So this is this is all challenge to our higher education. And also we see the, the new technology rising, like uh, artificial intelligence, like uh, robotics, like cloud computing, IoT, 3D printing, quantum computing. And right now we have this AR, VR, metaverse. Uh, everybody know Facebook changed his name to uh, Verse, and the Microsoft just spent seven six billion to buy. Uh, actually, it's the meta. It's a game playing company. Actually, it's a meta metaverse. So this is a new trend uh, for the high tech. So we have to think how. We're going to educate our next generation of students how to face in this impact of new technology and also how to use this new technology to help to facilitate our education. And also we have a new generation of students, so-called Z generation students. They are digital native. They probably don't know much about our history. They are on the cyberspace all the time. We all know the chaos in the internet uh, world. There's no role there. They may be a bad influence for them. They may have a different character from last generation so facing those problems, how we can develop new pedagogies and curriculum to address this issue. Since the advanced technology, actually everywhere is short of engineering. We are scared lack of the talent Consider the example of Taiwan. Everybody know semiconductor uh, industry in Taiwan is doing pretty well. And they continue building this factory. And they suck all the engineering, affect other industry. That's a reality in Taiwan. 
and I'm sure other country have similar kind of problem. Also, low birth rate is a real issue in Taiwan, also in many other countries, particularly in Asia, uh, like in Japan, uh, like <laughs> in uh, many in China, Korea, or even in Singapore. So how we address those issues, no student, then what's the purpose of university? And also there's a government issue and we need the money to run the university, the finance, and also the government regulation. Uh, different country have different kind of regulation. In Taiwan, uh, we are highly regulated, highly regulated. Everything we have to got approval from uh, this uh, uh, Minister of Education. So in Taiwan, it's highly uh, regulated. So all those are challenges facing uh, the university in Taiwan and maybe our part of the world. And then let's see the uh, experience that we have at ancient university from a sugar cane field to a university. Oh, that's before going to there. That's uh, going to the next one. The birth rate problem in Taiwan. Now it's 2021. 20, uh, the freshman population in Taiwan this year is less than 200,000. And the biggest, biggest challenge is in 2028, we only have about 160,000 college students include the vocation school. So this is really a, a big challenge to us. Uh, no student, and we have, as everybody know, we have uh, over 160 university. So they how going to survive without student? And we're going to talk about our experience with those uh, uh, challenge issue. Uh, how university uh, was founded in 2001. Actually, we started with a uh, prepared university in year 2000. I was uh, returned from US. Uh, I have uh, been teaching in, in the university over uh, 20 years. Actually, it's about 25 years. So, so when I returned from US to Taiwan, as Professor Fan Dashen, my friend, no. It's quite different. The university system in US and Taiwan is quite different. So we had to adjust the local uh, culture. And uh, at the beginning of the university, we had to build the, uh, the system, uh, recruit the faculty, set up the curriculum. Uh, even before that, we had to find a land and the uh, beauty uh, campus. I'm sure the Dashen and Professor Leo have experience in the University of Macau. Oh, the very fast, I think a beauty about 99 building, I believe in, I don't know, two years, three years. Oh, it's a fast growing university uh, as I know. But here we also have the same, same problem. Yeah. So uh, you can see in 2000 is a uh, sugar land field, okay? And right now you can see uh, all the, uh, the building, uh, the, the college we have, the quite a contract compared to uh, the year 2000. And uh, this is one of the most beautiful campuses in Taiwan too. We like to have a, uh, uh, this uh, a good environment for uh, students learning for faculty research. So that's the way to adapt this kind of uh, uh, this uh, uh, Norman uh, the Greek style building. 
and talk about uh, university education uh, uh, from our uh, this uh, <coughs> ancient uh, China, this Li uh, Ji Da Xie. We know the Da Xie is taught in Ming Ming De, in Qing Min, in Zhe Yi Zhu San. The great learning in the book write the way of great learning consists in making one's bright virtue brilliant, consists in loving the people, and consists in re residing in public goodness. The German philosopher Karl Jesper, the true university has to have three attributes, academic teaching, scientific research, and a creative cultural life. The card Kerr, the first chancellor of UC Berkeley, say, a large modern university or multi university had to operate as part of a society. No longer as an ivory tower apart from it. What do we do in university had to be relevant, re relevant to the society. We had to contribute to society. We had to make impact to the society. And also the Cardinal John Henry Newman said, the education is about character formation. Here, so we have to uh, Asian mercy, uh, get a wisdom from all those uh, great people. We are very emphasized on moral education. We have three virtual education morality, refinement, and good taste. We honor citizenship, sex ethics campaign, sort of food culture campaign, green responsibility project. We also very emphasize on aesthetic education. We have a museum of modern art designed by Prisco Award winner, Tedo Ando. About more than 100 artwork uh, by the Grand Master on campus, include like Dodin, Henry Moore, Arman, and Yang Yang Hong. In the past eight years, we have 22 exhibitions, such as Zhao Wuji, Yosh Yoshitoma Narwa, Yoyoi Kusama. And we all also have the service learning program, we promote volunteer service education, organize the volunteer bank to encourage, encourage students to do service locally and globally as a volunteer. So 84 credit hour volunteer service course are required for Asia University students. This graduate, graduation requirement so in 2011 to 2015, we have uh, over 70,000 students participate in this uh, volunteer service. And we are now, Lena is uh, artificial intelligence uh, age. The education strategy at the Asian University is that we want to train students that the uh, capability that you won't be uh, replaced by AI. Uh, like uh, we have aesthetic moral education, exemplary learning, core discipline for creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, maker spirit, and also the spirit of human care and empathy. Those are not something that AI can replace. But at the same time, we establish the courage of artificial intelligence. So a student can receive this professional training in artificial intelligence courage. But also, we adapt the model of Carnegie Mellon University, they have a conversation courage, and they have uh, this uh, uh, intercourage program uh, with our, our courage. So that's the model we adapt here. We have courage, artificial intelligence, uh, and a cross 
intra-college curriculum with our other college, like medical and health science, like uh, management, humanity, social science, creative design, nursing, and also computer programming course are required in general education. We we'll adapt the comput computational thinking, most design thinking, flip classroom, project-based learning in our teaching. And over year, actually our students are doing a good uh, job, uh, receive over 42 prizes in AI competition in Taiwan during the past two years. We also uh, developed a smart campus uh, using a 5G smart sensor. We developed a lot of AI application, the smart teaching, smart environmental and energy management, license prayer recognition, smart medicine, administration, library, uh, smart life, and smart breeding. Uh, so all campus right now, we're using uh, this uh, AI technology. To support research, we also create many research center, like an AI research center, we cooperate with Kyoto University, Edinburgh Center for Precision Health Research, <clears throat> working with the University of Missouri, China Medical University, High Performance, High Performance Material Institute for HT printing, uh, work with Georgia Tech, actually with the National mm -hmm. uh, uh, University, uh, NUS, National University of Singapore, and also Nanyang Likong Technology. Big Data Risk Center, Center for Biotech and Blockchain, Institute of Innovation and Circular Economy, Center for Prevention and Treatment of Internet Addiction, Intelligent assistive, assistive Technology and Rehabilitation Innovation Center, Research Center for Edible and Medicinal Mushroom. And all faculty students receive like a National Innovation Award over the past uh, three years, the 12 National Innovation Award. All students, uh, in eight consecutive year, received this uh, like a German red dot IF Japan G mark. We rank number one and all, all in, in the higher education uh, general university in Taiwan. <clears throat> we also have a lot of this partner university in many parts of the world. Run with Sam MOE with 344 university in 34 country. And even we have the uh, MOU with the older university, University of Bologna is an older university. Uh, many old, uh, uh, we all know many old university originated from uh, Europe, uh, many in Italy, uh, in uh, UK, Spain. Uh, we are MOU with some of them. And we also establish an international advisory board. Oh, Bureau actually, we establish international Taiwan Education Center in Sarabaya. So this is the, uh, the center uh, sponsored by Ministry of Education and operate by Asia University and China Medical University. So we have a lot of great relation with the university in Indonesia. Indonesia is the youngest in terms of population over 2,000 million population, the youngest uh, country in terms of uh, the population, the age in, 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 in the whole world. So it's a, a country has a great potential. So we luckily we have a lot of this uh, uh, interaction with the university in Indonesia. And we also established the International Advisory Board. Since we are a very young university, 
our experience actually is uh, a lot of is uh, local. So we need uh, this uh, uh, international this uh, expert who has uh, uh, international experience in higher education uh, bring in their experience, their idea uh, to help us to build, uh, to pro our vision to uh, have more this uh, uh, interaction, more program in terms of uh, mm -hmm. teaching, student learning, research, international activity. Uh, we are very grateful great for that. Those uh, uh, outstanding individuals, they are agreed to serve on the board. Uh, like uh, Dr. Bertie Anderson, uh, a renowned biochemistry. Uh, he was a chairman of the Nobel Committee for Chemistry in 1996 and a former uh, president of Nenkopin University in Sweden and also Nanyang Technology University in Singapore. Dr. Ruth Arlong, a world-renowned biologist. She was a president of Israel Academy and also vice president of Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. Dr. Aaron Bo uh, Boston, a uh, world-renowned applied mathematician and member of the Distinguished French Academy of Science, and also my girlfriend, uh, Dr. Fong Da Xian, a world-renowned theoretical physics and also the Federal American Physical Society. Uh, he was a chair professor uh, and also the uh, surf as the uh, program director, U.S. National Science Foundation, and former vice president of the University of Texas, uh, Dallas, and Dr. Navi, the former president of Techni, and also the current uh, president of National University of Singapore, uh, Dr. Tan. And here we also uh, bring uh, the special, uh, this uh, uh, education program here is a Nobel Laureate Foreign uh, we have at Asia University. Over the year, we have a 17 Nobel Prize winner have uh, this uh, forum at Asia University. Uh, our student, our student actually learn a lot how their attitude, how uh, they pursue the knowledge, how to, uh, uh, the, their journey. Uh, some of them, they probably, uh, the, they are come from poor family. I think those are a good inspiration to our students. And many of them actually, when they visit Taiwan, uh, they all mention the most exciting part of their trip is the interactive with the student. The most, uh, so they are, although they are uh, in their field, uh, they are, they are uh, uh, a great accomplishment, but also they care about education. Uh, they all expressed to me that this is the uh, most exciting part of their uh, trip in Taiwan. We also have the museum. Uh, uh, we bring this uh, direct from this uh, well-known university like Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, Cambridge, Tokyo, Peking, museum director uh, symposium. Uh, our museum actually is a platform, open uh, platform that we invite uh, the artist or educator, educator or museum director and with our local educator and also the uh, artist, they have, you know, uh, interact to uh, maybe generate a new idea uh, to maybe can produce a good more uh, result. And as you can see that uh, AI is applied to many area, uh, particularly in medical, it's more mature. And right now it's, you can see uh, more, have more successful uh, result. So here we also do a lot of medical AI uh, research. Uh, in a hospital, we have a center for big data, AI center for medical diagnosis, 
Center for Medical Intelligence, Center for Smart Medical Science, Technology Innovation, Center for Precision Medicine. Uh, we try to apply to uh, some of the AI uh, medical uh, area, such as a virtual assistant, medical image processing, uh, natural language processing, audio pattern recognition, assistant medical care, disease risk prediction, drug mining, health management, hospital management, and so on. And this is what we are hiding. Uh, the sustainable, sus sustainable development goal, SDG S. Uh, that's uh, uh, set up by the United Nations, uh, address a lot of this uh, emerging issue uh, facing uh, the world. At Asia University, uh, we have uh, also have some USR project like uh, internet addiction. Uh, she said, right now, we, a lot, a young people, uh, not, just, not just young people, a lot of people have uh, this uh, internet addiction. So we have program, we have center, try to prevent this internet addiction, also have treatment. This is probably only center in Taiwan. Also, we have other interaction with uh, many universities, like Harvard, like Kyoto, many other university. And also the aging, the population, we have dementia, dementia, uh, dementia problem. Uh, so we have innovation and integrate care for dementia prevention at local community. We also using the AI to uh, help enhance the fish farming project, <clears throat> smart emerging strategy and telemedicine in remote rural area, smart architectural quality and brand certification platform using AI and blockchain. Bridging the AI literacy gap between the uh -huh. urban and rural elementary and high school, quality are created with smart technology, and so on. So we also involved in the Operation Taichung INGO Park. And right now, uh, I think the most important is the uh, climate change. So, uh, we actually uh, sign the United Nations 2050 Declaration on Net Zero Carbon Emission. In the university, we also established the Sustainable Development Promotion Committee and Promotion Always, and also joined Taiwan Institute of Sustainable Energy, and also joined the STAR, Sustainability Tracking Assessment and Rating system. Our net zero carbon emission, uh, actually, this uh, carbon emission came from could be behavior, and we have to preserve the nature, how to use the technology to reduce these uh, carbon emission. So, uh, when I talked to Professor Huen, he, he asked me, What's the big change of the impact of COVID-19? Actually, I think it's the digital transformation. Oh, right now, like what we're doing using the internet. We have this digital hospital, digital finance. Oh, so this is a big impact. It's a <clears throat> digitalization transformation and AI transformation. And right now we are entering the stage of the carbon-free transformation. So our net zero methodology includes a strategy for integration, value chain effort, operation reduction, and remaining uh, emission uh, strategy. And over the year, uh, we have some uh, recognition from uh, some ranking system. So this is some of the ranking just for your emission. So uh, world challenge right now, uh, actually, as you mentioned, the current change. I think, uh, include Taiwan, many countries didn't realize how serious it will be. As Bill Gates said, right now, the, uh, the COVID-19, we have uh, over 
five, five, million, five million people dead. But the climate change will cause more dam damage to our human uh, society. Uh, so uh, uh, many people actually did not realize how serious it is. So I think this is one of the biggest challenges we have. The disease, uh, like pandemic, the water problem, the energy crisis, the population, pollution, property, uh, conflict of war, you can see in, 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 in <clears throat> Europe, in many parts of the world, natural disaster, aging society, and so on. I want to show you a video of what we do student do in Africa uh, as a conclusion. So just a very short video. The Amitofo Care Center in Africa is about 12,000 kilometers far away from Taiwan. There are a lot of kids who are lake of caring. Some of them come from disadvantaged family, some of them come from single parent family, and some of them even lost their parents. But they still try their best to fight for the fate and never give up. In July 2017, 11 students <clears throat> came from different departments with different majors of the Creative Leadership Society of Asia University, led by Director Professor Chunwei Ling and Professor Yan Nagash, traveled far away to serve the Amitofo Care Centers in Lesotho and Swaziland. Under the OPRO's project, the Overseas Professional Social Service Project to implement the advanced project-based learning methodology, an innovative learning method developed in Asia University. Through team discussions and activities, they stimulate the children's creative thinking, confidence, and self-learning skills. Cindy She, a sophomore of fashion design department, taught the kids to use local newspapers to design their own dresses and held a fashion show for these children. Jasmine Lin, a freshman of psychology department, designed a psychological board game to teach these children how to share their feelings and relieve their emotions. Grace Lai, a junior of Leisure and Recreation Management Department designed a Be My Guide activity to inspire their interest in tourism. Carol Lee, a sophomore of Accounting and Information Department, created a popcorn production and marketing strategy game for the students. Of course, the fun part was to eat up all the popcorn at the end of the game. Tony Chen, freshman of healthcare administration department, designed a hand-on course to let the students understand the fundamental knowledge of daily life hygiene. He also taught the student an easy way to make water filters. <clears throat> During this amazing month, with the enthusiastic hearts the students uncovered the colorful part of these two distant countries. With the grateful mind and sincere love, the students show the children the hopes of lives and the opportunity to overturn their future. At the end of this one month long journey, what we really have accomplished for these black Pearl children is using a PBL learning methodology of our OPRO's project to deliver the seed of bliss from the other end of the world, the Asia University, 
Taiwan. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Jeffrey, for this uh, comprehensive and very unusual discussion about Asia University. Um, I'd like to explore a little bit more your thinking, because after all, I think your thinking about building higher education is how Asia University today becomes what it is. So when you came back from the United States, your experience about higher education there, um, probably like most of us, we experience what standard universities are like. We have College of Engineering, College of Science, College of Humanities, and so on and so forth. But you built a completely and totally different form of higher education. I am pretty sure when you started doing this, there must be people saying, Jeffrey is out of his mind. He He's doing something, you know, people don't understand. Can you say something more about, basically you came back on a piece of land with nothing on it. And how did you come up with this paradigm of higher education, which is totally different from what normal higher education is like. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Ashen. I think the, uh, actually, it, actually it's the, a team, teamwork. I actually, uh, just one of them, and the, uh, also a lot of people that uh, contribute to the, developed the university, uh, including the founder of the university, the board of trustee, and of course the most important, uh, the students, faculty. And uh, before I come back, before I come back, uh, uh, as we know, uh, we all, many of the uh, educated in uh, United States and also, uh, also work there. So normally what we do is, uh, do research, okay, do research, looking for research grant, write paper, train this uh, student, PhD student. Uh, occasionally we'll attend this uh, conference, uh, give an invite talk. Uh, so uh, before I come back, I asked my department chair, his wife, uh, YK Chen, uh, he's also uh, probably you, uh, one, many of you know, uh, probably Dio, uh, Professor Dio, no, probably no, Chen Hui Kai, his brother is Chen uh, Hui Hua, the twin brother. Uh, one is also the Zhong Yi Yuan in civil engineering. Uh, he said that uh, here you can con continue to publish, publish paper. But when you will have uh, opportunity to uh, lead a university, you can make a great impact, not just writing paper. <laughs> so uh, that's the advice I get from him. And when I return, actually, actually it's, a, it's a new university, like Da uh, People, uh, people, uh, 
actually don't uh, uh, have, they don't have good uh, uh, this uh, the expect that uh, the university uh, twenty years ago will be like what are we here today. Although we still facing a lot of problem, even more tough problem. But uh, when I come back, I see the student, see the change of the university. I think that's the, the biggest reward to me. Every day, uh, when I come to school, every week, you see the, the difference in the university. You see the student, uh, they grow, they've done something. Uh, so, so I think that's a big reward to me. So I, I think the, the important is that uh, is you have the really care about the uh, the education, the young people, the next uh, generation. I like uh, Dashen uh, do a lot of this. I mean, I probably Professor Leo I mean, I have, uh, all the, in the in in uh, the. Uh, attend this foreign have the same experience. I think the key is the student, the generation, that's the, uh, that give you an idea how, how we can uh, develop a better, better program, uh, better facility, better opportunity for the young people. And that kind of, that kind of thinking that drive you, that you should, uh, do something for them. You should learn uh, from outside. You have to build a connection from outside. You get resources from outside. Like we did, we created this uh, international advisory board. I think that's very important. Through them, we can connection, connect to the world. We can learn their experience, learn the experience of how they have Asian University. So I think uh, actually uh, we are trained, it's not for education, but we through the learning. Uh, so I think it is a good example is lab, uh, lab time learning is important that uh, uh, we are not trained for digital education. We are trained in our own professional. But with this kind, this kind of thinking, this kind of passion, uh, we can learn that uh, how, how we can help our children uh, have a better environment and help them have a better future. So that kind of thing can drive me to uh, create this, uh, what we have uh, maybe just a, a little uh, result. Yeah, since we're still very young, we still need to be humble, we still do learn from many other universities. I, I kind of lo lost your voice, uh, Da Xian. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, uh, I unmuted myself just now. Uh, I think the um, what you have done is truly remarkable because you did not follow the standard uh, standard operation in building a university. I always remember that uh, Professor uh, President Syed, I think that's his name, when he became president of Carnegie Mellon, which you mentioned in your talk, uh, he actually saw that computer science, instead of just numerical analysis, could become an intellectually driving force for the society. And what he did in 10 years was to turn Carnegie Mellon University into almost what people later on refer to as Computer U and became so far ahead in computer science that it bootstrapped it many other di directions as well that Carnegie Mellon became what it was or what it is today. 
And what I saw in your thinking is that you saw artificial intelligence is like computer science in the 1980s. And you seem to have put a huge amount of effort into transforming artificial intelligence into an intellectually robust area where students going into whatever they do in Asia universities seems to have connection to AI. So once again, I would like you to drive, dive deeper into your thinking as to what made you realize that artificial intelligence is so fundamentally important that not that many universities in the world is changing their curriculum or changing their modus operandi into this and how you could do that at uh, Asia University almost seamlessly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, yeah, I think the AI actually uh, uh, is not new, but uh, they failed two or three times. But now I think since the hardware uh the like uh, nvidia you know the chip the the uh do the computer graphics they do the vector matrix computation and in ai they have the machine learning deep learning uh they have some over the year they have some work through and which the uh the cloud computing iot big data and also the the hardware. So this is a time that uh, AI really can uh, really help uh, these our uh, industry, also society, even change our this uh, uh, future uh, human society. So actually. Uh, in Japan, they talk about society 5.0, beyond industrial 4.0, that uh, in the future, we're going to have the human and no robotic uh, coexist. Exist. We're going to face in that society, I believe, uh, going to be very soon. And AI also can, since uh, uh, they can uh, also uh, do the automation. So a lot of job you can repeat, uh, uh, the, kind of repeat it, do the same thing. You can repeat by AI. So you can uh, from our daily life or industry, uh, we can uh, reduce the cost. Also. Uh, bring the convenience to the uh, daily life. So I think it is definitely, this is, is, is a trend. We have to catch up. So what do we do is create this uh, AI college. And then we have AI college work with each uh, other college uh, to uh, have an inter college uh, this program. That means uh, the, the courses curriculum in different colleges try to see they can add this AI component. So what we do is uh, not just uh, do this inter uh, college curriculum, meaning that's uh, X plus AI or AI plus X. We also require these older students that uh, they have this uh, AI programming language uh, uh, skill. So we, we do actually two, uh, two tricks. One is to cultivate our student the capability. Uh, there's something that AI cannot do, uh, like uh, 
empathy, uh, as you would say, empathy, that good is uh, uh, queer thinking, and interdiscipline, ethic, uh, those AI can, cannot do. So we strain our students in those cap capability, and also uh, our students have the AI knowledge and do can do the AI related job. And not just that, we also build the AI center and also work with the hospital. So we do a lot of this uh, medical AI research uh, and also have this uh, uh, project from the government. And also we have the spin off company doing the AI. So from the education, in the college, student do the internship at a company, and then also employed by our spirit company or our company. Since right now in Taiwan, I think many like in US, these high tech company all short of short of this uh, mem this this engineer. So in a way, uh, we have this industry to train the uh, the engineer. And also our students uh, have a good job, a good pay. So I think that's uh, part of the, the mission of university, you know. We train students and help them be successful in their career. Very good, thank you. Uh, you know, Harvard uh, has a president which lasted from 1868 until 1909, 41 years. Uh, his name, he said that uh, a university must be close to the social and political habits of, of, the, of the place where, he, where it grew up. In a sense, that's what you're doing. You're also making AI very rich in terms of its intellectual bandwidth. Uh, we have a, a visitor from uh, Bloomberg News. Uh, 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 his name is Max Lu. Max, are you still there? He would like to ask a question. Yeah, I'm here. Thanks, Darshan. Uh, hi, Professor Tsai. This uh, is how you? explain I'm, I'm, who you are. Yeah, I am from Bloomberg Media, uh, the media branch of the Bloomberg Company, and specifically I came from a team that we organized uh, the Bloomberg New Economy Forum that happens in Singapore, Beijing, alternatively. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to. Uh, listen to our insight and ask question. So I guess one question I have is, uh, you, you know, your university is called Asia University, and Asia is sort of the 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 most watched place um, out of everywhere, like in the 21st century. How do you prepare your students for the complicated uh, future that Asian all Asian countries face? Right. When you, in your presentation, you talk about. India, you talk about Indonesia, mainland China, Korea, all these countries are quite complicated. How do you best prepare students to grow their career uh, in this environment? Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Max. I think the what we do here is the I think it is the uh, the basic is uh, literacy the the. The, I think the most important the, we want to students have a good attitude. Good attitude, I think, is the uh, what we uh, try to hear to do here. So students have to have this uh, not not just uh, those, uh, uh, for example, the basic skill like AI programming language, and also we have a. Uh, so called three one a program students have to master is uh, uh, the the language Chinese language and the English language. I think uh, the 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 whole world population probably uh, those are most uh, popular language plus the programming language students have to master that. One means uh, we try to students have this uh, global experience. Uh, at, at least once in four years through uh, eight 
different kind of mechanism. For example, do the inter in, uh, internship, for example, in Korea, in Japan, Singapore, Indonesia, or other part of the country, or do this uh, volunteer service, uh, different part of the world, or do this double degree, or attend this competition, present a paper. So we try to have a student have a global outlook experience working in other country using his own, you know, his own uh, discipline, uh, how to, uh, uh, how to uh, adapt himself in that kind of environment. But I think the most important is the, as I mentioned, the attitude, the uh, cross, cross discipline uh, thinking, as we say, from vertical, vertical thinking to horizontal thinking, uh, cross discipline, vertical to horizontal, and also that time learning. Uh, those I will try to uh, train our students. Uh, when you have those, you know, uh, ability, I think uh, no matter where you go, you know, your good attitude, uh, critical, critical thinking lab, learning ability, your good uh, communication skill, uh, speak the language, and hear your own professional. I think no matter where, I think you will be, uh, I believe you will be successful. Uh, we Thank have you. a gentleman here named Hermana Warga Hadi Brat. Are you there? You have a question. Would you like to ask the question? Mr. Hermana, please tell us who you are and where are you? Hello? Um, well, I let me get his question then. Uh, where is it? I'm sorry, I lost him. Um, let's see, where is the question side? Actually, actually uh, there's a, a question posed by some of uh, these uh, uh, people who register. I don't know whether okay. you want to use that. Yeah, the, uh, okay, I, but I don't see it. Okay, we don't, I don't know, know maybe, where... Riva, you wanna post? Oh, here it is, here it is. Okay, yeah. there's a PPT, uh, right? He asked the following question. Asia University Taiwan has persistently shown as one fine example emerging well-rounded university beyond present time multidisciplines excellence paradigm. We are proud and excited to be one of its partners. Uh, please keep on exploring and discovering where no university has gone before. Greetings from Jakarta. This is a great question. I think I would like to ask, explore a little bit more. Southeast Asia has uh, become one of the fastest growing regions, the 10 nations of uh, ASEAN. And in that 10 nation, the largest one, of course, is Indonesia. And I've seen that, I saw that uh, uh, Asia University has developed a very, very robust relationship with uh, Indonesian universities. Can you give some thinking as to how you come to that conclusion and why you are putting so much resource into doing, into building that relationship? Yeah, I think the, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Indonesia have uh, 2,000 is uh, million, at uh, least population. And I believe they are, the medium age, I, I believe is about 30 or something or 20. The youngest, uh, youngest is this uh, country in whole world and there's a uh, great potential uh, is and also is a I believe it's a probably uh, Asian this market Asian plus one it's the biggest market right so yeah so I think as the one of these most important country in uh, South Asia 
we we like definitely uh, this our uh, this our the, the 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 we want we want to build a duration as you mentioned the uh, the in Taiwan we we don't have too many students you see the very low birth rate so you had to go international right that's the one way you can survive right if if you don't go to international then it will be very, very difficult to survive since you simply don't have student so we go where we'll have a student and indonesia is one of the uh our main our main target so we run our manage this uh, Taiwan Education mm -hmm. Center in the, the in Sarabaya in the in, in the campus of University of Aranga. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, every year, uh, I think last month we just have this the uh, higher education forum with the uh, in, uh, university in Indonesia. We bring the uh, university. Uh, the president from the director, president from Indonesia University, and then the president in Taiwan as a foreign, and also sign uh, MOU. Uh, using this platform, we have uh, help the university in Taiwan to establish the relation with the university in Indonesia. So we do this not just for Asian University, we do this for also for the university in Taiwan. And we have done this uh, uh, not just uh, the student recruitment, uh, not just the send a student to Taiwan. We also do the internship, do the research, send a student to university in Indonesia. I have a joint research. And also we actually had a lot of Taiwan business men in, in Indonesia, in South Asia. We also try to uh, train their employee, you know. Uh, so, so I think that's uh, a very important country. Uh, we try to have a more this uh, uh, interaction, cooperation uh, with them, and definitely we need a more student from them. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I think uh, once again, I think uh, uh, Indonesia is a very, very important country, uh, and its its importance is growing daily, and we should recognize that. Uh, all over Asia, I think we should recognize that and and work with Indonesia to uh, to to work with them into uh, a um, even more important centers in the future. Uh, we are coming closer close to the end. I want to ask a last, and I think it's an important question. Uh, Asia University and Zhongguo Yao Dashue. Uh, have formed a system. Question number one, is it possible for the two universities to join closer than you are now? Why am I saying that? It's because medical school for a university is a very, very complex, but very important part of any higher education in today's world. But having a medical school is a very complex thing. The joke is that for the nine Ivy League universities, only one president always have a smile on the face, and that president is Princeton. It's because Princeton does not have a medical school. But having a medical school with society facing new challenges in healthcare, I think the opportunities for Asia University and, and China's medical university, Zhongguo Yiao Dashue, forming some close alliance would not only be good for Taiwan, but I think will be good for Asia. What do you think, uh, President Chai? Yeah, I think that's a very good uh, suggestion. Yeah, what uh, I just report to you what we do. Actually, we have the uh, 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 student learning part, education. We have uh, inter inter. Actually, we are formal system affiliate. 
China Medical University of Asia is a, a free uh, university system approved by Minister of Education. This official is a university system consists of two university. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Actually, we student take uh, taking the courses over there. Their student taking since there are more medical. Uh, 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 the university, we are more comprehensive. So they don't have like, for example, manage, management, they don't have design, uh, they don't have this computer science, uh, AI. Uh, so the student can take our course. And uh, we have a joint degree. Uh, so this is a joint degree program in the uh, diploma. They have a two name of university. So that's the education part. We have an actual curriculum activity every year. Uh, we have a long term for you the actual curriculum, sports activity. That's uh, in the student side and also student recruitment. We all do that all together. That's a student side. On the faculty side, we have uh, a pre research platform that the China Medical University put some research internal money. Asian University ought to put some internal money. And then the faculty uh, here join with the faculty at the China American University, they can join, write a joint proposal and apply this internal funding, doing the research together. And also this uh, international activity, uh, like uh, we have the, uh, this uh, uh, Taiwan Education Center in Sarabaya actually is uh, operated by both Asian University and China American University. And some of these uh, conference, we just have, have a joint conference is uh, basic uh, biological science. Uh, we invite uh, two uh, Nobel Prize winner, one Tang Prize winner, and about 20 uh, uh, this uh, National Academy of Science, uh, this uh, uh, give a speak, uh, give a, uh, a speaker in the joint conference. So we have that, that is uh, a lot of uh, joint activity and also hospital. Uh, in China Medical University have the, about 17 hospital around the Taiwan. And mm -hmm. also uh, with our, this uh, Asia University hospital, also belong the same system. Uh, so we have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, support, like uh, uh, this medical doctor, support this uh, patient care, research, uh, so right now we have a, a lot of this uh, cooperation, yeah. But that, but uh, thank you for this suggestion. I think we can do more in the future. Thank you, well, uh, Dasha. I, I just I just thought that when I was in Taiwan, what I saw is that uh, the medical school will take in students from day one, and and normal universities will take in students also from day one. But a student who spent some years in a in a standard university at later time may feel that they want to be a medical doctor. The transformation from one to another is almost impossible. Whether your connection between Asia University and, and Yazhou Yixue Dashue, is there a way for students from your university who wanted later on to become a medical doctor can transfer into the medical school? Yeah, I think uh, the we are trying to do that, but also that also regulated by the Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since everything here is regulated by the Minister of Education, they have to get approval from them before we can do that. Yeah. 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 Ah. <laughs> well, <laughs> such is life. Uh, such is life. Reality. Yes, such is life. Such is life. Uh, I, any, anybody else would want to ask a question now? Uh, just raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Well, if not, I think we, we have also extended our long enough time. Let me, uh, let me summarize a little bit what we heard today, what I have heard today. And uh, what I heard is that Asia University is truly an unusual university, not only in Taiwan, but probably in the world, because everything you do 
seems to revolve around interdisciplinary. And everything you do is look forward, look towards the artificial intelligence as a, as a foundation of what you wanted to do. And that's very unusual. And you, we all know that just like computer science, a computer science degree today is very different from just being a numerical analyst. There are so many things you can do with computer science in the 21st century. I think we are just at the moment, just barely touching the surface of artificial intelligence. And that is why I think I'm so impressed by what you do in setting up a, uh, a uh, artificial intelligence college so that we can take this opportunity having a broad intellectual bandwidth to explore what other opportunities there are in, in higher education using this facility. Um, I'm, I'm very excited for Asia University's future. By the way, I noticed that there are a lot of high school principals participating in today's discussions. And I hope that they heard what I said. I think it is very important that students with a aspiration and with a vision of the future should consider Asia universities in the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you want to summarize more, uh, President Tsai? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the Dashian, uh, the, uh, the Professor Fan is uh, enormous that is uh, patient and also volunteer, volunteer <laughs> to uh, his time, his effort to uh, uh, this uh, serve as a moderator and also give us this, as an international advisor member, give us uh, guidance. I really appreciate and I'm looking forward to uh, work with you more uh, with the, uh, you and other members of the advisory board. And also like to thank you, uh, all the, uh, the, the people uh, attend this dialogue, particularly Professor Liu, uh, all, uh, all friend, I heard a lot good thing about you from our uh, that's uh, Debbie, Debbie, our, our good friend, Debbie, Dashian, and many other, you know, we all miss him a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have come to the end. I want to again express my gratitude for uh, almost 120 people uh, attended today's uh, uh, sem uh, forum for the last 90 minutes. This is very unusual, by the way. Usually people start to drop out after one hour. Apparently what we are saying in tonight's uh, forum attracted them even to the last minute. Thank you very much. And, Thank you. Uh, let's hope that we will have, not hope, we will have more of such conversations soon. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you, President Tsai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.